Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about absolute convergence. So absolute convergence is a really important concept, especially related to these alternating series. And we're eventually gonna see that the concept of absolute convergence is gonna give us another helpful way of testing whether an alternating series converges or not. And so let's go ahead and first define what we mean by absolutely convergent. And so say we have a series of the form, the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n, then we say that that series is absolutely convergent if the sum from n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n is a convergent series. And so essentially all we do here is we take our starting series and if it had any negative terms, we just make them positive. So we look at positive versions of every term in our series, add all those up, and if that series uh, converges, then we say the original series is absolutely convergent. Of course, this will not be the case with every series. Not every alternating series will be absolutely convergent. And so there is gonna be the case where our normal series converges, but when we look at the sum of the absolute value of the terms in our series instead, that does not converge. So if that is the case where we take the sum of the absolute value of the terms in our series and that does not converge, then we say that our original convergent series is conditionally convergent. It basically is only converging because of those negative terms causing some kind of nice cancellation. And so we have come across already some examples of series that are absolutely convergent and conditionally convergent. If we think about the series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n over n squared, that is an example of a series that is absolutely convergent. And just to go through all the motions here to make this argument more thorough, right, if our starting series is the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n over n squared, then if we wanna test it for absolute convergence, we take the absolute value of the formula describing the terms in our series, and if we take the absolute value of negative one to the n over n squared, we're just gonna be left with one over n squared, right? That numerator is always gonna be switching between negative one and positive one. So if we take the absolute value of it, it is always positive one. And after doing that, we're now looking at the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n squared, which is convergent, right? It is a, a convergent P series. And so because the essential absolute value of our series is a convergent P series, we know our starting series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n over n squared, that series is gonna be absolutely convergent. And we also have an example of a series we've seen before that is conditionally convergent, and that is gonna be our alternating harmonic series. So remember, one way to write our alternating harmonic series is the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n plus one over n. And we argued earlier that by our alternating series test, we know that the alternating harmonic series must converge, right? It is clearly an alternating series. The terms in our series are decreasing and they're getting closer and closer to zero. So it's gonna be a convergent alternating series. However, if we look at the absolute value of the terms in our series, we're gonna get the sum from n equals one to infinity of just positive one over n. Just like in this series above, when we take the absolute value of everything, uh, that negative one power is always going to be positive one. And since n is always positive, we don't need to put it in absolute values. But that gives us the harmonic series And we know from earlier videos and discussions that the harmonic series diverges. And because the series that is made up of the absolute value of the terms from our starting series is divergent, that means our starting series here, the alternating harmonic series, is conditionally convergent. And so some of our earlier kind of comparison tests and way of determining if a series converges or not uh, does not apply to alternating series because not all the terms are uh, positive. And so our next theorem essentially says that absolute convergence implies regular convergence. It's a stronger condition if you wanna think of it that way. So if the sum from n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n converges, so our series is absolutely convergent, then that guarantees that our normal ordinary starting series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n is also gonna be convergent. 
And so just to be clear, if our series converges absolutely, it means that the series must converge. If our series does not converge absolutely, then it's inconclusive. It may or may not converge. And the good example to keep in mind to help us keep that straight is our alternating harmonic series, right? We know our alternating harmonic series uh, converges, but it is conditionally convergent. So this theorem would not be, uh, be able to be used to show that the alternating harmonic series converges. We just have to use something like the alternating series test instead. And so maybe you're wondering, why don't we always just use the alternating series test instead of looking at something like absolute convergence? Well, the answer to that is there will be other uh, applications of absolute convergence we'll see later on. But another kind of uh, point to make is not every series will be uh, purely alternating, right? We may have irregular alternation. And in that case, our alternating series test would not apply. Our alternating series test only applies when every term is alternating as we compare them term to term. And so if we do have something like an irregularly uh, alternating series where like maybe it goes two terms are positive, then a negative term, then two positive terms, then a negative term, that's where looking at something like the uh, absolute convergence of that series and using this theorem might be better instead. And a really informal way to kind of think about this and why uh, absolute convergence is a stronger property that implies normal convergence is when we take the absolute value of the terms in our series, uh, no cancellation can occur between uh, the terms in our series, potentially making our sum like smaller if you want to think of it that way. The sum of the absolute value of the terms of our series is always going to be a bigger sum than our normal series. So that means the sum of our normal series should always be smaller than this sum. And then we can use something like a comparison test to finish that argument off. Because if the bigger sum is converging, then the smaller sum must also converge. And so that's a very kind of informal way of thinking through the uh, idea behind this theorem. Let's go ahead and maybe write down a couple inequalities and some algebra to maybe further solidify that idea or argument. So the uh, the regular series, the sum from uh, n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n is going to look something like a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 and so on. And the idea is maybe this is an alternating series or maybe just some of these a sub i values are negative, then what we can argue for sure is that if we take the absolute value of all of these terms, like the absolute value of a1, add to that the absolute value of a2, and so on. Well, then all these pieces on the right-hand side of this inequality have to be bigger than or equal to the corresponding pieces on the left-hand side. So the right-hand side is definitely bigger or at least equal to. It'd only be exactly equal to the left-hand side if everything on the left-hand side was already positive, right? There's no possible way for some subtraction or cancellation to occur on the right-hand side when we're looking at the sum of the absolute value of all of our terms. Essentially, what we do next is we take the absolute value of both sides of this inequality, and that's going to actually preserve this inequality. And furthermore, it's going to let us show that the left-hand side has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Whatever this adds up to, um, it's either going to be zero or something bigger than zero once we take the absolute value of it. But the right-hand side of our inequality, well, every number in there was already positive. We had already taken the absolute value. So this additional step of taking the absolute value after summing up all those positive numbers isn't really necessary or doing everything. So we can actually drop that and see that this is still going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of a1 plus the absolute value of a2 plus the absolute value of a3 and so on. And so what we've essentially shown writing this now in our summation form is that zero is less than or equal to, so it's a lower bound for the absolute value of the sum of our normal series. And it's going to be bounded above by the sum of the absolute value of the terms from our starting series. And so what that means is that if this special series converges, then the absolute value of the sum of our starting series is going to be bounded below by zero and bounded above by s. And then there's not too much arguing to do after that to show that it must also converge. So again, all this is really just showing this concept of absolute convergence has a really nice application. We can take the absolute value or turn all the terms in our series positive, add those up. If that new series made up of just these positive terms converges, then our original series must also converge.
All right, everyone, in this example, we are asked to determine if this series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of sine of n over n cubed converges. And so to get started, we might uh, list out a few of uh, the uh, terms in this series, and maybe add them up and look at some partial sums. So if we list out the first uh, four terms here, we got sine of one over one cubed, sine of two over two cubed or eight, sine of three over 27, add to that sine of four over 64 and so on. Although one thing we're not doing here that may get us into some trouble is we're not like really evaluating or approximating the sine values. Because what we would see is that for some of these values, like sine of four, we would actually get a negative number. And so what's gonna happen is because of that periodic nature of our sine function, this is gonna be an irregular alternating series. So not every other term will be positive and negative, but there will be some negative terms mixed in because of that periodic nature of our sine function. And so because of that irregular alternation, some of our previous uh, tests for convergence aren't gonna be able to be applied directly. So instead what we have to do is try to see if this series converges absolutely. If we can show that it is absolutely convergent, then remember that implies regular convergence, right? We could uh, pretty quickly show that the, the terms in our series do go to zero. But because it is irregularly alternating, that's not enough to show by the alternating series test that it is convergent, right? The alternating series test only works if we go to zero, the terms are decreasing, and we have that regular alternation. But here we have that irregular alternation, so that's out the window. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to consider the series that is made up by taking the terms in our starting series and applying the absolute value function to each and every one of those terms. So now we're looking at the series that is the sum from n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of sine of n over n cubed. Really, uh, n cubed is always gonna be positive because n is just these positive integers here. And so really the absolute value only gets applied to our sine function. And so now if we can show that this series converges, then we can show that our original series must converge because if this series converges, our original series is absolutely convergent and absolute convergence implies normal regular convergence. So now to actually make the argument that this series is convergent, we have to use the comparison test. So what are we gonna compare this to? Well, this looks kind of like um, one over n cubed or one over n squared or some kind of P series. And to kind of really get it all together, what we need to recognize is our sine value has that uh, range from negative one to positive one. But if we take the absolute value of sine, then we are always less than or equal to positive one. And so that means we can divide both sides of this inequality by n cubed, which will always be a positive number. And dividing both sides of an inequality by the same positive number will not uh, alter the direction of your inequality sign. So that means sine of n over n cubed is always less than or equal to one over n cubed, which means the, uh, the series that is the sum from n equals one to infinity of the absolute value of sine of n over n cubed has to be less than or equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of this upper bounding uh, function one over n cubed. And technically we also know that this uh, sum we're interested in is bounded below by zero. And so this sum, the sum of one over n cubed that we are now comparing to the sum of the absolute value of the terms from our starting series, we know that this series is convergent. It's a convergent P series. It's a convergent C P series with P equals three. So we know that this series converges we also know then by the comparison test that any smaller series must also converge. So because this upper bounding series is a convergent P series, the series we are actually interested in must be smaller than that, so it must converge. And so that means this series is convergent. That means our original series is absolutely convergent. Then it must be convergent in the ordinary sense. And so this argument that we've gone through shows that the series that is the sum of the absolute value of the terms of our starting series is absolutely convergent. And since that series is absolutely convergent, it means our starting series must also be convergent. So we have determined and shown that the sum from n equals one to infinity of sine of n over n cubed is going to be convergent.